Music TT presents Project Spotlight Album Launch live on Friday, 26 February at 8 p.m. exclusively on Music TT's YouTube channel. Hosted live by Rome, featuring performances by Aaron Eiffel, Mahalia Thomas, Alethea Bihari, DNA868 Music, Just Liz, Leah Richards, Aisha Noel, and Monique LaChapelle. Stream the album live on all major platforms from Saturday, 27th February. But see you live on the 26th for the launch of Project Spotlight. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's room. Are you ready? It is all about Project Spotlight, the event. Tonight, we are going to drop an epic EP. Are you ready? All of you locked on on Zoom. All of you locked on on YouTube. I need you to drop some flames. I need you to drop some flames in the chat. If you are ready, it is brought to you by Music TT. And tonight, we have a fantastic show for you all. We have a fantastic show. A show where we have eight superb artists who are going to perform their lives out tonight for you as we drop an EP. This is Project Spotlight, the event brought to you with the kind compliments of Music TT. Now, if you don't know who Music TT is, let me give you a quick idea. So, for those of you who don't know, Music TT is a state agency under the Ministry of Trade and Industry with a mandate to stimulate and facilitate business development and export activity of the music industry in Trinidad and Tobago. Now, in 2017, Music TT launched its Spotlight Artist Portfolio Development Program. Right, so I need to see the flames. Let me see who is here with us tonight. I'm seeing Giovanna is here. She is excited. Mariella dropping her flames. A simple black boy. Yes, everyone. Sarah, she's locked in as well. Jada, JC, all the way in Australia, is here with us tonight. We are ready. Now to give us a little bit of an idea of this Spotlight event, let's hear from our Spotlight alumni. Spotlight is an artist portfolio development program where Music CC provides skills for artists specific to their individual needs over a period of nine months to one year. These training sessions include stage performance skills, vocal training, and helps us to identify those artists who are ready to take their talents internationally. Music TT conducts auditions every year. So to be in the know, go visit their website and follow all their social media platforms right now. Some Spotlight artists have been cast in international productions like The Lion King in London and some are on tour in Italy, Bali, Singapore and Canada. Some have even been nominated and received awards at various local award events. Spotlight is open to all genres, however, Music TT is making special links with international agencies, producers, and industry executives that has a special interest in artists and music with Caribbean flavors. It is recommended that those who apply have moderate to significant performance experience and are actively creating a catalog of music. Right, J-Wave, Keone, thank you guys very much. They were past alumni and they have all made waves across the Caribbean with their talent. They are part of our Spotlight team. Now we're going to jump inside our performances tonight. But before we do that, this EP is epic. And I guarantee you that I went through it myself. I heard all of the tracks and I'm telling you, you are in store for a fantastic show. And I can't wait because this has already been released. It is on all platforms. So you'll need to head and stream this EP right after this show. But you're going to see these performers live, live and direct. So, but first we want to give you all a little bit of insight of the people responsible for this. Of course, Music TT, but we have Daryl Jove with us tonight epic songwriter. He has written a, a great load of songs throughout the Caribbean. One of the most sought after songwriters in the Caribbean. Big, big, big in the soca music genre as well. Helped a lot of the soca artists. And then we have our music producer all the way from Australia. Talking none other than JC of HCL. Now he has had his music featured on HBO, on Disney, on MTV, even in sporting events, NFL, on NBA, WWE. So 
We have our artists in great hands. So ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna start off our spotlight with our first spotlight artist, performing on the national instrument of Trinidad and Tobago. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big warm welcome as she performs a track called Spotlight, Mahalia Thomas. Hey everyone, my name is Mahalia Thomas and I'm a panist slash musician with Music TT Spotlight program. My genre of music is usually upbeat, so we're looking at reggae, pop, R&B and of course, soca. <laughs> As an artist, I'm usually into upbeat songs. I usually look at artists such as Beyonce, Michael Jackson. Yeah, those are my favorite. Those, when it comes to performance, they have it hands down and one day I hope to be like them on stage. To be honest, I did not want to play pan. My mother told me to go and play pan. I, I really fight down with her. But you know, mommy, what mommy say, mommy goes. So you have no choice. So then from then on, I started really loving the pan, you know, especially for panorama time, you're just jumping up and stuff. And when that music take you, yeah? mm, that is, that's a <laughs> I'm a really goofy person behind, like, when y'all don't see me behind videos and stuff, like, like, especially, like, with close friends and stuff, I'm a really goofy person. I do, like, a lot of random stuff. I make random videos, especially karaoke. I'm watching back those videos, be like, oh, who is that person? <laughs>
Wow, 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 wow. You all make some noise at home for Mahalia Thomas. And not only for Mahalia, for Mahalia's outfit too. Look at that outfit. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. My fellow Aremian, you all make some noise at home. Send some clappers in the comment section for Mahalia Thomas. Well done. Well done. I can see you all on Zoom, eh? I am seeing you, Josan. Hi, Josan. How are you? Are you? Give me a wave. Give me a, give me a Miss Universe wave. <laughs> to all of you all on the Zoom, you can turn on your cameras as well. I can see you all live and direct. We are doing this. It's a new, it's a new world. 2021, you all know. 2020 was, was crazy. 2021 is going to be a lot better. We're getting the hang of this thing. So now we have this virtual thing down packed. So I can see you all live. You all can see me live. I can see your comments. We're going to do this as though you are here with me in the studio. So we're going to jump to our next spotlight artist. Our spotlight artist number two goes by the name Aaron Eiffel. Now I can tell you this guy's personality is amazing. You can see it come out in his performance as well. Full of charisma. He actually writes his own songs and records himself. He's going to be one of our top recording artists in the future. Someone to look forward to. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Aaron Eiffel. He will be performing the one. Hi, my name is Aaron Eiffel, and I'm a singer-songwriter. My genre is a blend of jazz, pop, reggae, fusion. I started when I was 18, I started singing. My first performance was at a modeling pageant that was happening in my neighborhood. And that's kind of how I got the first break. I um, performed that day, and the response from the audience there is what kind of gave me the push to actually go on and, and pursue this, because ever since I was a kid, I always wanted to be, like my dream job was to be a singer. And the fact that I'm living my dream now is, crazy but yeah that's kind of how I got my start. I kind of took a hiatus for the last couple of years and this was kind of my re-entry into the industry and performing and recording and releasing music so definitely releasing more music for the people that were waiting for all these years. I don't know if this is fun but I cook a lot. <laughs>
Well, with the passion, the enthusiasm, the emotion that Aaron just sang that song with, I would swear the one is either logged in on Zoom or on YouTube right now because somebody tugged on his heartstrings for him to deliver that performance. Y'all give it up for Aaron Eiffel one more time. It is called The One. And talking about delivering a performance with passion and with emotion, the people responsible for these performance performances tonight are their performance coaches and with me tonight i have two of our performance coaches with me on stage i have a cool and i have miss glenda collins with us hey. good night good night, hey, good hey, night, good night. <laughs> now these are experts in their field Akua, let's start with you because i know that you kind of focus a bit more in terms of the steel orchestra and the pan yes so i know that mahalia performed earlier and tell me what is some of the advice you would usually give to a panist in terms of performances yeah, definitely for panis in general i mean mm -hmm. it's always about execution but mahalia was a special um experience you know she had all this energy she had all this her, her focus she was willing to go beyond what a normal panis would do all the antics you would have seen up or down there mm -hmm. all that came from her spirit so it was definitely um based on execution of of course but then the execution of the performance is part of what would have brought her to that point today because I always watch a panist performing. And then I, I always say in terms of how you would coach a panist to perform itself. Because remember, they're just playing an instrument right. versus a vocalist who gets to express their emotion in terms of their vocal ability. In terms of a panist, what would be one of the things that you would point out to them in performing to a live audience? Well, for sure, you have to interact with your audience. Yes, there's, we already focus on getting the notes right. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to express your, 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 your pitches correctly, make sure you have the proper striking abilities, the dexterity and all these different things, but you still have to interact with your audience. So that is one of the things she would have had to brought forth today. And I saw that. I definitely yes. saw that and I saw her bringing her, her personality Correct. into it without her having to say anything. You could have seen that she was enjoying her performance. So well done, Akua, Thank on you that. Very much. So let's jump to Glenda. Glenn, I love the outfit first. Oh, thank Papa you, laps. thank you, Papa thank laps. you, thank you. That's for you, that's for you. <laughs> thank you, Glenda, thank you, Glenda. So, Glenn, if you all don't know who Glenda Collins is, I'll give you a little backstory on Glenda. She's one of the top vocal coaches, in the, not only in the country, but in the Caribbean. And Glenda, I know that you would scout people from Trinidad and Tobago for Disney's Lion King. Yes. So let me ask, in terms of that, what are some of the characteristics you look for in a performer in your scouting? Energy, 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 personality coming through with your, with your truth. You have to, you know that, you have to come and bring yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes, every time. So in, in, in guiding all of our artists tonight, is there one thing that stood out to you in all of the artists while they were learning on their journey? You know, um, we are such a talented, I mean, every street corner you will find 10 
10 talented singers, 10 amazing fan people, 10 amazing um, 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 dancers, whatever. But what we, do, what we lack is that energy to push ourselves forward. We lack that energy just to think of ourselves as fabulous. We don't like to go around thinking of ourselves as fabulous. So my, my work has always been to encourage singers to think of yourself as fabulous. Don't be shy about that talent. You, nobody wants shy. Because it's, it's surprising that, that Disney would source artists and performers from yeah. Trinidad and Tobago. So yes. what do you think it is about Trinis uh, and Tobagoians that stands out to be able to perform on world stages like that? We have it. We have it we in have our blood. It. We have it. Without a doubt, without, we have it. But it's just always to give us that little kick. Mm. And once we get that push, you see us. We out there. Heather Headley. Hello. Nicki Minaj. Hello. Yeah. Look at you. <laughs> yeah. Once we get that little push, we go on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So these are the people that gave our spotlight artists that little push to push them into bringing out this EP here tonight. So I want to thank Akua and thank you very much, thank Glenda, you. for thank joining you. me tonight. Thank you You're for welcome. having me. Thank, thank you very much for contributing to this EP. So we're going to ask so, some of our artists to join us tonight, right? The first one. You okay, go ahead, go ahead. And we're going to ask two of our artists that just performed to join me to find out what they thought of their performances. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this stage. Let's bring Mahalia, right? And, and Aaron, come in, come in, come in. Papa, you watch it. Watch my hair hat now. Watch my hair hat now. I love it. I love it. So, <laughs> Mayla, let me start with you one time, right? Yes. Welcome here, welcome here. This outfit, mm -hmm. tell me about it. Okay, so the name of the song was Spotlight. So, I wanted to try something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I said, I put some, I want my, maybe like, like a split person, like I think you have yellow hair, and then you have a little different outfit here. I was like, oh, I need a hat. So, you know, me and mommy stayed up and we made the hat. <laughs> so, y'all came up with this of it. Mm, yes, yes. On your own. I love it. <laughs> Maelia, Maelia, and I just spoke to Akua, and in terms of your performance, I love that you brought that energy and that emotion into it. What was in your mind while you were performing? Were you nervous? Before performance, I was definitely, definitely mm. nervous. But when I hit the stage, it's like something has come over me and it's just been my zone. And then it's be like, ooh, and ah, uh, this. Because <laughs> we saw we didn't yeah. see a, 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 a drop <laughs> of nerves in that performance. So, Aaron, let me ask you, why choose that genre of music? Because I know that a lot of male singers in Trinidad and Tobago would usually gravitate towards soca music. But I saw that you took a different approach. So tell us why you choose that genre. When I was young, I grew up hearing my mom playing a lot of R&B on the radio, a lot of... You know, the Jill Scott's and the Luther Vandross and the Whitney Houston's, you know. So that was kind of where I started. That was the first sound I identified with, you know. So when I decided that I wanted to become a, a, a singer, become an entertainer, that was kind of the first type of music that I started writing. So, yeah, that's kind of why I ended up there. <laughs> All right. So, guys, you heard it from our two Spotlight artists, and we are getting ready to continue into our third Spotlight artist for the night. So let's give a warm music TT welcome to Monique LaChapelle performing Forever With You. Hey, I'm Monique LaChapelle, and my genre of music is alternative pop, R&B, and jazz. I got started in music from a very young age. I've always been in my primary school choir, high school choirs, and I've always had a strong passion for music. And I enjoy, thoroughly enjoy sharing my music with the world. I see myself right, uh, finishing my album, and I see myself certainly touring the world next year. As soon as I'm finished with my degree, I would definitely love to tour and take my music further, and the goal is definitely to win a Grammy, <laughs> or two, <laughs> more, <laughs> and collaborate uh, with international artists. When I was younger, I used to want to be a professional footballer, a goalkeeper, and I was sort of really obsessed with Bionicles when I was younger.
It doesn't matter who says yes or no. We'll do as we please. A lover strolling on the avenue. A glass of wine or two. It's pouring heavy outside, but there's a fire inside, and it never dies for you. When I look in your eyes, my soul comes alive. And baby, I don't. Make some noise at home. That was Monique. I'm seeing a lot of people join us. I'm seeing Kristen. She is here. She says, we have it. Akira, Simone is here. Kezia, Francois, Whitney Cummings, Giovanna. Y'all drop some clappers. Drop some clappers. That was Monique. And we are moving swiftly along. Now, let me tell you about this next performer. Because when I heard this song, my pause actually raised. The first time I heard this song. So get ready to be tugged on in terms of your heartstrings. Because this one is definitely one for the books. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Alethea singing Love Me. My inspiration in creating music and even performing music comes from a very emotional place. So I have to be able to connect with, with the song. And even the songs that I, I create, I have to really dig deep within an emotion that, that I feel to really create something amazing. I was always in it. I was kind of born into it. My mom is, is also a singer. So, I mean, we, we have this thing, she, she tells everyone, I, I actually started singing before I could actually speak. So that's how I, I learned how to speak, by, by singing first. And then gradually from there, my love for music just, just grew. I'm really into anime and, and cosplaying. I haven't done it in, in a while, but I'm hugely into it. Especially Batman, I'm like a huge fan of Batman everything in the Batman universe. Cause all it ever does 
I've cried my eyes out, but I'm only in the background. Hey. The world keeps spinning. And it's all Alitia make me feel to, um, to message my ex-girlfriend with that song, yes? Oh, gosh. I told y'all, a real heartstrings song. A real heartstrings song. Y'all make some noise at home for Alitia. That was Love Me. And oh, what an immense emotion that went into that. You could have seen it in her face. You could have seen it throughout that entire performance. I seen the hearts. I seen Brianna is actually crying. She's putting some love. Yes, Brianna, girl, I feel you. I feel you. Lisa, I can see you. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Yeah, those of you who have ever had your heart broken, those of you who have ever been in love, you know where I'm coming from. You definitely know. We want to see some heart emojis. We want to see some heart emojis. If you have ever been in love before, we want to see those heart emojis right now in the Zoom, in the YouTube chat as well. So now we're going to talk to one of our other coaches. But this time, in terms of the field of intellectual property. Now, this person that I have with me here, let me introduce him one time. Ladies and gentlemen, let's, let's welcome with us Brian Khan. So Brian, let me, let me talk to you a bit in terms of elect, intellectual property. And now, now, Brian works with the university in Turin, am I right? That's correct. Right. That's correct. And in terms of the World Intellectual Property Organization. So this guy here with us, he knows a lot when it comes to intellectual property and in terms of law, in terms of music as well. So let me ask you, Brian, in terms of what advice you would give to a, one of these artists coming out when it comes to intellectual property and protecting their intellectual property? 
Um, what I would say is that what a lot of people get wrong about copyright is it's just a small part of a really big puzzle, you know? What we want to be doing is nurturing and protecting our creative ecosystems. And that's just not the law, that's your relationships, that's your business practices, that's a lot of different things working together, you know? So a lot of people think copyright law is just some like magic wand and it's like, yeah, you wave it and then you're just balling. Right. But that's not how it works, you know? There, there's a, there, there are a lot of different elements that go into it and, and the law is just one small aspect. So educate yourself about that but put it in context of your creative ecosystem. So something that I, I always get this question uh, as an artist myself, in terms of how can someone protect their music if they, they wrote their song and it has not been released as yet, but they don't have a, an entire contract in place. They always ask me, what is a simple form in terms of protecting their music? Well, a funny thing is in by law, you really don't do anything. You, it's automatically protected once you create, you know, a lot of people don't realize that, but just to avoid issues in the future, you know, keep good records. Mm -hmm. Like when you write down a lyric sheet, maybe write a date and just a signature so you have some record of when you did things. Keep archive all your digital files of your demos and your production things and just record keep in mind, you, you know? It, right, it's 2021, so it costs nothing to keep records. Yeah, and, and, and something that I always tell some of the artists too is a simple email can yeah. stand up where you, you send an email between yourself as the artist and the producer or the songwriter and then that itself could be a contract um, amongst the three people. And, and I think a lot of artists, they don't pay much attention in terms of intellectual property, mm -hmm. but Brian will be able to speak on this as well. In terms of 2021, in a technological world that we are in now, where we have a lot of streaming platforms, how important is intellectual property in a time like this? Well, it's not only extremely important to protect, but I would advise all the artists out there to advocate, you know? Talk to policymakers, talk to government agencies, talk to the people you work with about the value of your assets, how to protect them, how to exploit them. And you know, just, just the funny thing is, Rome, in the Caribbean, we do things different now. The vibes in Trinidad, the way we license, the way we create is different from anywhere else in the world. So mm -hmm. we need solutions to our own vibes. Right. So, I would encourage artists to advocate. That's yeah, a big yeah. part of the scene. So, so any artists, because we have a lot of artists and musicians locked on right now, both on YouTube, on Zoom, listening to us around the world and from the Caribbean, right? And uh, we want to make sure that you all get your properties protected with intellectual property. So thank you very much, Brian. Bless up. Yeah, man. And now we're going to have two of our spotlight artists. Let's, let's invite them. Monique, come in. Come in, Monique. <laughs> Aletia, come on. So let me start with Monique. Monique, in terms of this entire journey that you had with the, the Spotlight program, what was one moment that stood out to you throughout this entire journey? Anything at all I would have jumped out in terms of whether it's the, the, the coaching, whether it was you getting to write your own song, the performances, what was one part of this journey that you wouldn't forget? It's really hard to pinpoint one part when I enjoyed all of the journey. I mean, each aspect taught me something different and it, it brought different strengths and knowledge to the table. So with each leg of the journey, I would say it was worth it and I learned a lot. It, they were all special to me. All. I don't want you to think there's a Miss Universe competition. No, <laughs> oh my God. There's no wrong no. answer, there's no wrong answer. It's all about your experience. Right. And would you recommend this Spotlight program for any other upcoming artists in Trinidad and Tobago? Oh yes, I would definitely recommend this program. This has taught me really and truly out of everything. It, it taught me the hard work that it takes to persevere with this career path, because it's not an easy career path to just get into. I mean, your your whole artwork is in the public's eye. You're being criticized. Mm -hmm. This is part of your job, you know? Mm -hmm. So you have to be willing to have thick skin to deal with all of that. And you have to stay true to your authentic self because life can get um, pretty busy. So I would say, Definitely, definitely stay true to yourself and stay true to your dreams. And the Spotlight program was amazing. It did that for me. And, and speaking of being true to yourself and staying true to yourself, let me kick it to Aletia. But Aletia, if we're talking being true to yourself, that song, was it written? Did you write that song? Yes. 
And where the inspiration came from for that song? Was it, was it a relationship? Was it someone you had in mind when you wrote that song? At first, yes. It, there was a person at, in mind when I first started writing it. And then as I revisited that song to, to finish it, it really took me into all of my life experiences. I give so much, and I think we can all re relate to this. We would give so much, not just to people, but for what, whatever we, we put ourselves for. We give so much, and most of the times we don't really get anything in, in return. So this time I'm telling myself, I need to stop and just love myself. This whole song was a song about self-love and really finding my, myself, because if, if you don't love yourself, how are you going to love anyone else? Mm, mm. And, and I love that. Love yourself first. You heard it from Alethea, coming from her heart. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for two of them. They were marvelous. And we're going to jump inside our next spotlight artist. Make some noise at home for Leah Richards. The name of a song is called Down. Hi, my name is Leah, and my genre of music is pop, R&B, and soca. Well, I started at the age of five singing in my parents' band called The Exotic Vibration. We would have performed at all the hotels and all the events and shows in Tobago. So far, I've achieved a boost in my confidence, a huge boost in my confidence, a push for me to put myself out there a lot more and the response that I would have gotten from my audience, my fans, is amazing. I see myself on the biggest stages in the world, touring all over the world, doing everything. A fun fact about me is I am a joker and I could cook. I could cook, I can cook, yeah.
Leah Richards from our beautiful sister Al Tobago. Wow, wow. Sweet like sugar cake. Sweet like sugar cake straight out of Tobago. We love that one, Leah. It is called Down. I also love her, her fancy glasses. I can't wait when she comes for me to see that in person as well. I love her entire attire itself. If you look at it from, from the, the, the height, uh, uh, that's what stock is. It's boots, I you know. I don't see it in real. I don't see it in real. When she comes here, I don't see that in real, real. So we're going to jump inside another artist. Now, this artist has been linked in terms of the way of her style, in the way of her fashion, in the way of her vocals to Barbados very own Rihanna. So let's see what she has in store for us tonight as we bring to the stage Aisha Noel and Aisha will be singing Sign Your Name. Hi guys, my name is Aisha Noel and my genres include soca, dancehall, pop and fusion. When I'm creating music, a lot of my inspiration comes from not just myself and my environment, but other music that I know, knew from before and that I've exposed myself to because a lot of the time when you're writing music you need to have you know other information, other sources so that you could put everything together and make this you know magical story so that's where I get my inspiration from I started off in the Uncovered series so that was back in 2018 and I was one of the finalists, one of the winners and I was able to work with um, established songwriters like um, Kit for instance and then from there I put myself in positions where I could be seen so I did um, some open mics there was one open mic in particular where there was a competition it was a competition and you know I sort of won before before even winning because as soon as I went in the open mic and I did it um, the producers who were going to provide you know um, free production and it was a sort of collaboration with the artist they saw me and they were like wow no we just need to you know regardless of if she wins or not we need to have her do a song with us you know so just kind of keep it under you know under loops and they approached me right after and that's how I got my very first song that was with um, Ballistic Boys, Ballistic Boys Future Craft Studios, and my first song was Nobody Be Safe back in 2018.
And I'm sure every gentleman in the chat right now is ready to sign his name with Aisha Noel. Do y'all think it could be the next Rihanna? You think she could be the next Rihanna out of Trinidad and Tobago this time? Do you think she has the potential to make it on that international stage? Well, let me tell you, she can and she will just like all of our spotlight artists tonight because when this ep hits the rest of the world you are going to see great things coming straight out of sweet tnt and i want to introduce you to some of the other people here who are responsible for putting these artists on that global stage in terms of preparing their entire brand here tonight with me i have laura lee lackeys hello how hello. are you our branding consultant yes. then i have crystal ivy london with us our styling consultant i also have with me mr josh rother a good friend of mine uh, who does both branding and photography so good evening good and evening, welcome guys. hello hello all right so let me start ladies first let me start with laura lee Thanks. so laura lee not only does branding consulting but she is also a tv producer she does TV presenting, she does radio presenting, everything in one. So, Laura Lee, when you were working with these artists, what are some of the guidelines you would give them in terms of developing a brand? Well, the first thing I always say is you need to be you, right? You can't just fabricate something that you think somebody is going to like and try to be that because eventually you'll just be found out to be a fraud. Mm -hmm. You can't maintain that, right? So, it's like be who you are, showcase your strengths, and that's the first thing we start with. Right, because I know that a lot of artists focus a lot on their vocal capabilities and the song itself. But in terms of the brand, in terms of the artist right. as a brand, how important is that? Well, I mean, at the end of the day, you want to make money, right? So it's about networking, making the right connections, being around the right people that you could get gigs, brand partnerships, that sort of stuff. So your personality is key. Your network is crucial. I tell them all the time, if you don't have a network, you can't make a net worth. Mm. And in terms of their image, I'm going to jump across to Crystal. So Crystal has worked with New York Fashion Week, with Trinidad and Tobago's Fashion Week. Um, she's a renowned stylist in the country. I know Crystal everywhere. I go to an event. Crystal has watched more. The first thing she's watched me from head to toe. Yep, Let she me does. style you now. Let me style you now because <laughs> you need help. I know, oh gosh, oh gosh, I reach. I come in, Crystal. How about look tonight? Right. You're looking good. All right. I don't, have, I don't have nothing to say. You're looking good. You're looking good. You're looking good. <laughs> so Crystal, in terms of the artist's image, what do you look for? To be honest, with each artist, I like to sit down and have a consultation with them because I want to get to know their personality. I feel I don't want to put my, per my personality and my style on them. So with their image, I need to sit, speak to them, get to know their personality and bring what it is that they like and what it is that they would see themselves, not only now, but in the future. And that's basically how I do it. Yeah. Oh, OK. OK. Because when I first started off, I had to learn to match colors. And then, right. before I could even bring up personality, I don't know what, that stripes don't go with polka dot. I right, the basics. Yeah, the basics. Yes, <laughs> yes. funnily and enough, in the workshop, she talks about underwear, we talk mm -hmm. about everything, everything. foundation From, up. Yes. Correct. Foundation hey, up. Yeah, we yeah, learning, Josh. Yeah. We learning, we learning, we learning, we learning. So, Josh, let me dive into you now. Yes. In terms of this project, you were dealing with photography. Yes, photography. All right, so what project. do you look for in terms of capturing the artist's image? Of, of course, these ladies would have, have set the stage, so what we do is we have to capture the visual right and, and of course that's very important to every artist i mean of course we know nowadays music by itself it doesn't just sell we have to actually put a face behind it so so my job was to really put a face behind who these artists are and i mean it was amazing working with all of them working with these lovely ladies so I mean, hey, that's what photography is about. And I mean, you know about it as yeah, well. Yeah, so. yeah, capturing, capturing yes, the moment. Yes, have to capture and the moment. We saw, we saw some great images of them, and yes. we are going to be revealing them soon, so they would be able to yes. see all the images that Josh captured all through this entire journey. Yes. So we want to thank you all, guys, very Pleasure. much for joining me here thank tonight. You. Thank you. Y'all give them a big round of applause, home. And we are going to bring both Leah and Aisha on stage with me. Two of the, um, I would call them the two, the two spotlight divas. Come, come, Leah, come, Leah, come, Leah, come, Leah, come, Leah, and Aisha as well. So we have Leah with us. Oh, style, style, style. What you doing? Um, okay, give me a spin, give me a spin. The both like, oh, Papa laps, Papa. <laughs> so Leah, let's start with you. You yeah. came from Tobago yes, with us tonight. We want to welcome you. We want to welcome. <laughs> so Leah, I would ask, in terms of being an island girl from Tobago, I know that it's probably a, a, a bit of a slower pace than Trinidad and Tobago. Definitely. Right, than Trinidad itself, sorry. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So what would 
you say was your inspiration to start doing music across there? Well, I've been singing since I can talk. I've been singing in the hotels in Tobago, shows, events, competitions. So that was my dream from birth. And I just wanted to make it into reality. And that was my drive. Just being on stage and how I feel on stage is why I'm doing this. Yeah. Do you say that you get a euphoric feeling? What is the feeling like when you perform? Well, I know tonight we couldn't do it for a live audience, but what is it like performing for you in front of a live audience? Performing for me in front of a live audience is amazing because I get to feed off of the energy. I get to interact with the crowd. The live crowd is so important. I get to get their feedback, hear from them after I perform, you know, that's what I love about all it. Right. So you all get in to see her outfit, head to toe, let's, cameraman, let's pan right, but this is what, it, I thought it was stockings, it's, um, it's a boots. It's boots. It's, it's knee boots. highs, papu. Knee high boots. Oh, uh, yeah, I yes. love it, I love it, I love, um, did you style yourself or did you have Crystal style you? Actually, today I was styled by The Closet, mm -hmm. by the Bikini series, she's from Tobago as well. Oh, from Tobago. Yes. All right, we love this outfit. So let's jump to our, our diva number two, Aisha. Hello, hello. <laughs> Aisha, I was told that you actually walked with your own microphone for your performance. Yes, I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Is that your lucky microphone? Like how somebody would have lucky socks? Yes, yes, sort of. It's like that. And it was a little bit of the um, COVID, you know, protocols oh, okay. as well. Okay, but, okay. you know, energy is good. And I, I like transferring that energy onto the stage. So that was part of it. So Aisha, from the first time I heard you perform at the Spotlight event, a lot of people were saying that you were linked in terms of a performance style to Rihanna. How do you feel about that? Mm -hmm. Performance style? Um, I mean, I admire her as a performer, so I would take that as a big compliment. <laughs> but uh, vocally and stuff, I think throughout this process, uh, doing the Spotlight program, I was able to, you know, really find that inner voice, you know, that voice that is me, that is Aisha, a lot more. So I was thankful for the Spotlight program for that. So I must say they performed, you all were outstanding. Um, Thank you. Thank you. I, I would give you all that. A lot of comments. We could see Mariela, I'm seeing Yola. They, you have your fans, they're cheering for you guys. So we're going to shout them out. Kristen is here, Samantha, Hi, Whitney. Kristen. Everyone Akima. is here and they are cheering Hi. for you guys. They loved your performance while you all were performing. I just seen flames in the chat. Flames. So, ladies. You all brought the heat and you were well, well, well put together in terms of your outfit, in terms of your branding, in terms of your vocal and in terms of your performance. So congratulations. Thank and we're you. looking for big things from the both of you all moving forward. Thank you so forward. much. So we're going to jump inside now. Another spotlight artist. He goes by the name DNA868 Music Performing. I don't care. Yo, it's your boy, Johan Popwell, also known as DNA868 Music. And I am a music TT spotlight artist. As an artist, I consider myself to be a multifaceted artist, meaning that I can do almost any genre I put my mind to, but I chose hip-hop as my medium to express myself musically. My inspiration varies from Queen the Band, Michael Jackson, Luther Vandross, all the way to local artists such as Super Blue, Iowa George, Bungie Garland, etc. I took, started to take music seriously around the age of 16. That is when I actually say, well, I want to do this as a job. I want to make money off of this. I want to leave my legacy with this. I'm a diva. Diva. <laughs> One fact about me that nobody knows is I actually do take music very seriously, even though I smile a lot and laugh a lot, joke a lot. Music is all and all for me. So while you see the smile, there's a lot of seriousness behind it. Yeah, you see when you're positive in life, it always has somebody trying to bring it on. We have no time for them wrong here, you know. Let me tell them we don't care. Coming down from the up top boss So I don't have no time for no bad mind Boss, you could spite me Pretend that you like me Cause all my blessings coming down
and chill. Belly hungry, but they broke. Even if you offer them a two piece and a coat, still you're going and hit you. Oh my God, God please you people. You act as you they ugly like you're in my seagull. All they hate and holler than Samurai, you black people. Oh, like them red, your DJs who said they support the local. They're bogus, too, too bogus, like the bogus, I'm in town. All I mess, I ain't had no time for stress. I try to live the best I can live while I'm still here. So if you feel like you're stressing me, you ain't blocking my best G. Me ain't had no time for no hater. I just try to be the best and not even greater. I just want to make it in a life of mature and living nice. So don't make me tell you how your mother make you. If you're negative, stay over there, sir. Cause I don't have no time for nonsense in the circle. Well, you can hit me all you want with your body. My name is Jess Liz and I am a spotlight artist. Um, who am I? I would like to describe myself as the bubbly, fun, outgoing personality type of artist. Um, my genre of music is predominantly soul and R&B. My inspirations are Ari Lennox, Jill Scott, Lauren Hill, Erica Badu. Those are like my biggest inspirations. I was around six years old and I, <laughs> I remembered looking out my window when I realized I could have carried a tune and I was singing through this little crack <laughs> in my window and wanting my neighbor to hear me sing so they could be like, oh my God, these songs so nice. <laughs> and that's how I got started. And professionally, I got started when I did a song engineering and music production course in NESC. One thing that y'all don't know about me is I used to rap. I was a whole rapper and I could beatbox. <laughs> I could beatbox. <laughs> This is something I do home by myself. <laughs> I go.
looking like a snack kiss. Funny way you call it. It ain't that often that you get a catch that's highly demanding. Self-made queen, I don't need nobody else. Got no problem, you can solve it for yourself. So when you can, they're gonna try to hate me well. Got no issue, they just talking to themselves. I want to see the queen emoji. I want to see the queen emoji. Put that crown. If you know that you are a queen and that was an epic performance, I need to see that queen crown inside the chat right now. That was just Liz. I'm seeing just Brizan is here. I thought the, the goddess, Noah Light, shouts to Nigel A. Campbell. Yes, they are saying, somebody says, talk done. Just Liz is it. This is Spotlight Performance. Sarah, Giovanna, all the queens stand up, Hannah. Woo, Mariella is here. Wow, 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 wow. What a performance from Justice. I tell them, you know, I, I don't know if Liz could, could ramp with her, you know. I don't know, you know, I don't know. Right out of Trinidad and Tobago. Now, as I said, we had a whole team of people behind these artists to be able to put out this EP. And one of the main persons behind this was a world-renowned producer. He goes by the name JC of 8CL all the way in Australia. Now, JC couldn't be here with us tonight. I know JC is actually in the chat. I saw him. You know, right, right, right. Look, JC royalty in our presence. JC is up and about all the way in Australia. So let's kick it straight to JC and hear a couple words because he is the man behind this project. Alongside Daryl, he actually produced, mixed, and mastered and worked with all of these artists to give you these great productions. Hey, hey guys, JC from Heat Music Club, all the way from Australia. 
just here to talk about my experience with the Project Spotlight. It's been an amazing experience uh, from Music TT. With the help of my man, Daryl Gervais, we came up with some bangers and we created something really special that we're so very proud of. And uh, the talent, Music TT talent, you guys are incredible. It just made our job a lot easy when it came to writing and co-writing and arranging everything, composing everything. So I appreciate uh, your level of professionalism and look forward to working with you guys a lot more. And I can't wait to do it more again. So please, let's keep working and let's keep moving forward. Cheers, guys. Thank you very much, JC. Y'all say hi to JC. He is in the chat. He's saying good day from down under. JC, let us know what time it is right now in Australia. Because it is now 9.15 here in Trinidad and Tobago. So we want to know what time it is, JC. Hello, JC. Thank you very much for being a part of this Spotlight project here. And tonight, we have Just Liz with us. We have DNA 868. Let me start with DNA. What you eat before this performance, boy? I want to know, what did you eat or what did you drink before this performance? <laughs> well, you honestly want to know, boy? I, I would love to know because I want some of that energy. Whatever you take it, I want it. Cricks, boy. <laughs> Cricks. <laughs> vital supply. The vital supply. The vital, the vital, supply. The vital supply. So, DNA, tell us. In terms of performing, we are performing in front of cameras right now. How did you tap into your internal energy to bring out a performance like that in a virtual world? Well, it's simple for me because music is a part of me. And performing on stage, there's no greater feeling as an artist. Performing on stage, live, in front of a crowd, everybody responds, seeing everybody respond with the virtual screens and stuff. So it was just a really nice experience for me, my first time performing in front of a virtual crowd. So the music just came out, and I'm glad everybody liked the vibe. Was it, was it the first time you ever performed with a live band? Yes, it is. Yes, it because is. Because I'm a performer as well, and I could have sensed that you tapped into the energy of the band as well. Is that true? Yes. We, um, for the first rehearsal, the chemistry with the band was awesome. We, could, we clicked one time, and it was just amazing from there. And, and I, I sense somebody dropped in the chat, they said it's a mixture of rap and rock. Well, that wasn't the effect we was going for. We were just going with the vibe of the song, and that is the vibe that come out, so we run with it. Because as a lady here, we nearly create a mosh pit, you know? Correct, correct, <laughs> correct. <laughs> correct. And Liz, 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 Hi. Liz, Liz. I'm just seeing queen, queen, queen in the chat. Queen, queen, queen. Our queen here tonight, Liz. Um... I made reference that a couple of people mentioned to me that you remind them of Lizzo. What do you mm. think of that? I, I could see it because I'm thick. <laughs> <laughs> I could also see because I think Lizzo has a level of confidence that she exudes. And I think because I'm thick, people think I exude that same confidence. I, I didn't see it as in terms of only your physique, but mm. I saw it in terms of the energy that you brought, that she, she mm -hmm. brings that as well, and you, you bring that. Okay. Um, did Glenda play any part in that? Because I was hearing, in terms of performance coaching, that Glenda Collins was giving you a little bit of, of a pep talk. Let's How say. was that? Oh, listen, Glenda, Glenda, Glenda. <laughs> Glenda made me, like, I, I had to reassure myself at times, like, am I really doing this correctly? Because she's the type of person, she will push you. Like, she will make sure that she gets what she wants out of you. And I had to, it was a little trial thing with Glenda, but she did attribute to me being more, like, out there and, yes, I'm Liz. Right, <laughs> you know? right, right. Because from what I was told, when Liz went to do her coaching, Glenda had to tell her, listen, this song is about you bringing out the bad B in you, you know? Bring sure. out that queen in you, you know? So you see this nice girl thing, leave that home, you know? Leave that home, and she left it home tonight. Because sure. I saw Just Liz in all of her glory and all of her splendor. So guys, well done tonight. Thank we you. all am seeing the comments going crazy. People enjoyed your performances, and you all wrapped up the show for us tonight. So we want to thank you very much. I know, fine, but Two thank you. of our final spotlight artists. And let's bring in, let's, let's go, let's bring in two of our main persons behind the scenes that put this entire project together, right? And I am talking about our general manager of music, TT. Let's introduce Melissa Jimenez. Good night, Melissa. Good 
<laughs> I'm Mr. Daryl Jove, songwriter extraordinaire. All right, let's start. Let's Good start night. with Good Daryl. Daryl, 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 this entire project, I knew that you played a pivotal role in this. In terms of working with the artists, mm -hmm. what would you say was your role in guiding them? Well, I am the executive producer of the project and co-songwriter on the project. Um, I, think, I think the role I played was more like being the glue that kind of stick everything together, you know, uh, making sure the vision was kept. And just plug in different situations, making sure we get the right producer to get it done, and all these things. But um, and making sure the artists brought themselves to these songs and really embodied the songs the way that it should have did, been. Did the EP turn out how you thought it would have yeah. been from the beginning? Hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this is my baby boy. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> this, I am so proud of this project. I am so proud of it. Like. It exceeded my expectations. It did? It did, it did. So, so Daryl, what do you expect moving forward with this project? And all right, so what do you hope for with this project moving forward? So the plan for the project is really to shop it for sync and, and, and film licensing and stuff like that. And through me and JC, we have a lot of connections in the sync world. So we're pushing it hard. It's already in a lot of music supervisors' hands, and they love it. So we are going to see songs of this EP I and mean, a lot of stuff. I, I love it from the jump when I heard it. I love the entire EP. And I think everyone that heard it tonight, they, from what we, we have been seeing here, they love it too. And yeah. what I must say is that it has an international feel to it. That's exactly what we were going with for. that local flair because yeah. you still have some of the artists that kept yeah. their accents in it, their, their energy, that vibe from the Caribbean. But in terms of the quality and the standard that you all put out, I must say, both Mel and, and Daryl, that you all blew me away and blew everyone here away. We appreciate that's that. good. Of the yeah. quality <laughs> of this project. This is definitely Project Spotlight is an EP like no other. Yeah, so let, let's kick it to Mel. In terms of this project, how long have you all been working on this? Um, October, November, December. We started it. We <laughs> started it in November. November. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And throughout this entire process, right? What you would say was the most challenging part of this, putting this thing together? What was the most challenging part? I honestly cannot give you a challenging part. Um, because Daryl really, really, <laughs> really, as he said, he was the glue. So pulling it all together and we had no problems. I think the most challenging part was us sitting down waiting. Is it on the, is it on the platform yet? Is it on the platform yet? Every day we check in and is it uploaded yet? Is it uploaded yet? Mm, <laughs> so the hardest part was the patience, right. I think. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and in terms of your expectations, did it match up to what you thought it would have been? Absolutely. Right now I'm walking, I walked inside of this room and I'm like, okay, Melissa, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. <laughs> because I've always, and I tell all these spotlight artists this, they come in one way and at the end of the program, I can't help but feel like a proud mama. So I'm like, oh my God, I remember the very first spotlight intake. I cried on the stage because I'm like, oh my God, look at my babies, they did so well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so this, <laughs> Melissa, this is cohort number three. Can yes. we expect a cohort number four after We this? already have a that cohort. We already have a training. We already have a training. We at all. No, We no, have a fourth no. cohort to come after this. Yes, and they will be having their show in October. And what can we expect from Music TT moving forward with projects like these? In terms of, we have a, a fourth cohort coming. Are we going to, all right, say that COVID regulations are, are, are relaxed a bit. Can we get to see some of these artists perform at live venues? Locally? Absolutely. So that yeah. has always been built into the Spotlight program. In conjunction with the Spotlight, we use the Live Music District for that. So cohorts one and two, it was mandated that all of them are part of the Live Music District and they use those stages to practice and perform for the audiences, um, big audiences, small audiences, so they know how to maneuver, whether it's a hotel, whether it's a, a, 
a park arena, whether mm -hmm. it's an actual in-house venue, so they get those different experiences and understand how to tailor their performances that and way. And why I ask that, Melissa, is because a lot of people in the chat were saying that they can't wait to see these performers perform live <laughs> because they wish they could have been here. And we wish that you all could have been here to see this with us live. I know that you're seeing it at home, and I'm sure you are enjoying <laughs> every drop of this spotlight. Um, and finally, in terms of, you spoke of cohorts number one and number two. What successes have we seen from these sort of projects? So, um, so let me start off. Let me, let me pivot by saying the Spotlight program, for anybody who missed it in the beginning, is essentially a scholarship type program. Mm. So we take you in, and then we do individual assessments to see where you're at. And then we map out what your educational um, path is going to look like for the next nine months. Okay. So that would include all the facilitators that came before in all the different arenas. Um, they would adjust their, their teaching to suit the cohort that's coming in, depending on the capabilities. So that said, um, at the end of it, you have, we usually had a showcase. So this is the first right. of what's going on here. So flipping to your actual question now. So... Candice Caton, she's one of our little mega stars there beast in the gospel. Mm. What if she's a beast? Listen, the first beast time I listened to that vocalist. girl, pause, raise, pause, raise. I was like, who, Jesus? Yes, I feel in here. Candice, I was different. like, who, yes. <laughs> So Candice, Candice has won several awards thus far in the gospel music industry. Yeah. So big up to Candice. If you tune on to any of the gospel stations, yeah, she yeah, is yeah, always yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you can always powerful, hear her music. Powerful voice. Yeah. We have Desi. Desi unfortunately left Trinidad and Tobago. Boo-hoo. <laughs> well, I um, know Desi. And when you told me about Desi, I was like... Desi? As in Desi, Desi? She, yeah. like, yeah. she was well, in the first one, right? Where is Desi now? So, so... Desi moved to Bali. Bali. <laughs> Bali. As in not in Balmain, but Bali, <laughs> as in Bali, Bali. Bali, Bali. All right. Yes, yeah, so Desi has moved to Bali. Um, she was working with a talent manager there who is also a Trinidadian, Ethan Ogis. Um, and Ethan and Desi, you know, just came up with this grand plan and had her touring Bali, Singapore, Australia, and Canada. So she's been doing a lot of that for the past, for 2019 into the early 2020 on thing, until things got sticky. Right. Um, but as of now, she's just waving that cultural flag in Bali. Wow. Then we have our boy, Daniel Griffith, who's just boarding out Candice with flames here. <laughs> yeah. um, so Daniel would have have been um, selected to be part of Disney Lion King's West End. So Daniel is wherever he is right now. Daniel, where are you? <laughs> we see you in the chat. Where in the world are you, Daniel? <laughs> And listen, Daniel was, was a person, I remember the very, he was in the very first cohort. I was not working with Music TT yet, and I just came in to see, you know, what's going on inside of here. It was at ZA. And he went on that stage, this cute, cute, cute little boy, and he just sat down on a stool with a guitar. And when he opened his mouth, listen, all you will figure by now, I'm emotional, right? I literally started to cry. The entire audience just went completely silent, and he blew away everybody with his wow. voice. Everybody. Like, wow. like he says he's in, <laughs> they he's asked in Scotland. Him to do a, he's in Scotland. <laughs> Scotland. <laughs> They asked him to do an encore at night, and, and even the judges, um, Cosine was also part of that panel as well for that night, and he was like, whoa! I mean, Daniel was amazing. Yeah. And we have another Daniel, Daniel Hamilton. Thank you very much, Mariella, for that prompt. <laughs> <laughs> um, Daniel Hamilton, which is from the second cohort, he recently got placed through Sync Licensing. Music TT has a partnership with So Stereo Company, um, who does sync licensing, and he got placed in a Zumba, um, with the official Zumba with company. Zumba, Zumba is an yes. international company. Yes, and Zumba. that is a soca song, people, so don't tell me soca not reaching for. Right. So, <laughs> you know, there are successes coming out of this, and I am so excited for this yeah, album. It course. was such a there good experience. EP, boy, <laughs> epic, epic, epic. You came, well, I'm, you came I'm just, good. I'm just happy that it's out, and the world could hear it now, that this yes. is what Trinidad has to offer. So, Daryl, as you said, it is out. Where can people stream this? Because a lot of people have asked, quick, okay, yeah. we heard them tonight. We want to hear it again. Where can we go to hear it? On every single oh, major platform. Everywhere. 
every single one. It's everywhere. It's on all the streaming platforms. And I saw that, uh, that uh, Spotify actually came to Trinidad and Tobago yes. this week. Yes. So yes. That's, 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 that's huge. That's huge. That's huge. Yes. Yes. That's huge. Yes. So y'all can go get that EP right now. It is Sp Project Spotlight. They're looking for Project Spotlight. Project Spotlight, Project Spotlight on all streaming platforms. Y'all can go and check it out. Look for your favorite Spotlight artists. Give them that support and let's start streaming this music. And we're looking forward to, to seeing this EP featured in, in movies or in sporting events or in all over. Definitely, we're looking definitely. for those, those, sync, those sync connections. Yep. And then even maybe one of the artists maybe talking like how Desi out there. We're seeing Daniel out there. So we never know and they have great potential. So Daryl, let me ask you in terms of who you would want to thank on this project. Um, I mean, I definitely want to thank Music TT for, for having the faith, you know, and having a vision and believing and trusting me. Um, and I definitely want to big up my Australian connection. You know, I have a team out there that I work with almost every day on a lot of stuff. And those guys never disappoint me. Um, and just everybody that supports and believe in the power of music, of good music. You good know? music. Good music. Good music. Um, tonight, we definitely heard some good music. Melissa, in terms of your thank yous, who do you want to thank on this project? Definitely, first and foremost, my team. My team is epic. I, I say that to everyone. My team is epic. Mariella Digans, Marte Manmohan, Karel Taylor. Big up, big my up, team up, up, is mm -hmm. epic. I, I could not ask for a better. The, the, Very the, dedicated yeah, team. Yeah, eh? how dedicated. Yo. And it's just a few of them. I know people yes. think music teaching is a million Bro. people behind it. Uh, yeah. But it's just a few of y'all. And y'all do such an amazing job. <laughs> so I would start off by saying thank you very much yeah, to yeah. music yeah. teaching. Yeah. And then the everybody time. drop some clappers in the chat <laughs> for flames, music teaching. Flames for music flames, TT. <laughs> music TT, the whole team for Daryl, for JC. Anyone else? Um, Melissa, do you want to thank? And we're thanking as well our marketing department. So we have Jillian, we have Josan, we have Jovan. Big up to them. Yes. You know, Jillian was doing her thing this this term tonight, the pre-show, and she just went into full-on stage mode. I was like, all right, check <laughs> you go. <laughs> so um, so thank you very much to my team first and foremost, and then for the big thank yous or the bigger thank yous, or however we want to phrase it. So we have the Ministry of Trade and Industry, right. who is our line ministry, yep. uh, Creative TT, who is our parent company. Um, thank you to Fashion TT, Film TT, for all the assistance they've given us throughout all the different Spotlight programs. And uh, thank you to our sponsors, Johnny Q, Sound Company, as well as NH Productions. Navin is a boss. Up, big up, big up. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, Moms are see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are live here at Johnny Q Sound Studios. And the production, I must say, NH, well done. The visuals, the audio. I heard someone even comment in the chat in terms yeah, of the yeah, audio. Yeah, they were yeah. like, wow, boy, whoever the engineer is here. Chris, Chris, they hear everyone, Chris. I think everybody did an amazing job. Everybody. All the pieces fit together to put this project spotlight together. And you at home, you need to do your part by heading on any streaming platform right now. Go download the EP, stream the EP, tell your friends, tell your family that the EP is out. Project Spotlight, it is here and it is amazing and it is going to do amazing things worldwide. Definitely. So thank you guys very much for having me as your host tonight. It is raw. It's your Friday night. It is your Friday night. Pop a bottle. We're going to have some drinks while we listen to this EP. We are out of here. Love and peace. We love you guys.
Music TT presents Project Spotlight Album Launch live on Friday, 26 February at 8 p.m. exclusively on Music TT's YouTube channel. Hosted live by Rose, featuring performances by Aaron Eiffel, Mahalia Thomas, Alethea Bihari, DNA868 Music, Just Liz, Leah Richards, Aisha Noel, and Monique LaChapelle. Stream the album live on all major platforms from Saturday, 27 February. But see you live on the 26th for the launch of Project Spotlight.